My name is Paweł Spechalski and welcome to the next video in the INAF 5 on the Flying Wing series. Today, let's set up all the flight modes. All the flight modes, surprise, surprise, are located in the modes tab. Very important note, the list of the modes you see depends on the sensors that your airplane has enabled. If you do not have the GPS configured, enabled and running, you will not see any flight mode that requires the GPS. This is maybe not that critical for the airplanes, but in case of the multi-rotors, no Mac or no GPS means that no position hold, no return to home, etc. Luckily, airplanes are more tolerable and to have almost all the navigation flight modes, you need only the GPS. You never need the magnetometer, but the barometer also technically is not required. It's a good thing to have. My setup has both GPS and baro no magnetometer, which most probably is the most popular INAV setup. So let's just set up everything that INAV enables in this case. First of all, we have to set up the arming channel. No arming channel, no arming, well, no flying. So in my case, I'm using the SB on my radio and the SB is assigned to the RC channel 5. By the way, it's a very good practice to keep the arming channel on the first auxiliary channel. Right after the roll pitch your throttle, keep the arming channel as the next one as the channel 5, which by the way is required for example by the Express LRS. So let's just add the range for the arming channel on the channel 5. By the way, I want this thing to be armed when the SB is not in the top position. That means I have to set up the range from somewhere below middle to max. Now, whenever I will move the channel B, channel 5, then the arming will trigger. Bear in mind, only setting the arming channel does not mean that the arming will happen. There are reasons why INAF might not arm and I have the video about this topic. So check out the description about why INAF is not arming and how to fix it. If you want to increase your safety and use dual arming with two switches, you can do it with the pre-arm but we will not cover the pre-arm today. The next thing I want to set up is to have the manual flight mode because from time to time I would like to fly manual and my switch that will decide about the flight mode will be the channel number six and I want to have the manual flight mode in the topmost position. So let me set the manual range, click save and now whenever the switch in my case, C will be in top position, the manual flight mode will be triggered. Because I'm flying always without angle and horizon flight mode, so I will just absolutely ignore them. I'm just not using them. However, from time to time, I'm using the NAV cruise when the INAV handles the direction and the altitude. So I want to add the NAV cruise on the channel 6 middle position because I want to have this thing on the middle position on the switch C and because I want also in this case INAV to hold the altitude, I have to manually add the NAV alt hold on the channel 6 to match the NAV cruise with NAV alt hold. In this case, whenever I will flip switch C to the middle position, both the NAV cruise and the NAV hold will engage. And finally, on the bottom position of the switch C, I want to have the most popular flight mode ever, which is acro. You will not find the acro flight mode over here, because the acro is the state when not angle, horizon, any of the nav modes or manual modes are engaged. This is why here in the bottom, if you have the acro selected blue, that means in the disposition the acro will work. That means in my case, I cannot assign any range to the switch C on the bottom position. Because look what happens when I switch to nav cruise. The acro got deactivated. And because I want to have it active on the switch C bottom position, I just do not assign any mode on the switch C bottom position. The next modes I want to have configured are the position hold 
and the return to home. For this, we will use the switch D, which in top position will do nothing. In the middle position, it will activate the position hold, 3D position hold. And in the bottom position, it will activate the return to home. In my case, the switch D is assigned to the channel 7. So let's go find nav position hold. And on the channel 7 middle position, let me activate activate the nav position hold. You see, it's reacting. Bear in mind, it will never turn light blue, which means it's active, because for the position hold to become really active, you have to be arm first. Now, this is only an indication that during the flight, it should be switched on. And finally, also on the channel 7, but this time on the bottom position, I do want to have the nav return to home. So, when I switch the switch D to the bottom one, the return to home, when of course armed and flying, will turn on. The next two modes I want to configure are the auto tune and auto trim. I will assign them on the switch a, when in the top position it will do nothing, in the middle position it will activate the servo auto trim and in the bottom position it will activate the auto tune. This is why in the mode stop let me find the auto tune and auto trim and assign the ranges on the channel 8 which I use to configure this to have auto trim in the middle position and auto tune in the bottom position of the switch. By the way, today we will not cover the auto level, launch and soaring modes. They are above the basic level of this tutorial. So either check my other videos for the launch and other authors to other modes. The last two modes we will cover today are beeper and black box. In my case, I decided to have both of those modes on the switch E, when in the bottom position it will do nothing, in the middle position like that it will activate the black box and in the top position it will keep the black box running and also activate the beeper. In my case the switch E is assigned to the channel 9, so first let me find the modes beeper and the black box, they are by the way grouped in the MISC modes and first of all let's add the range on the channel 9 of on the high position for the beeper so when I switch the switch E fully the beeper should go off and also add the black box on the channel 9 starting from the mid position up up to full position save and now we can check if the correct ranges were set of course, iNav has many other flight modes, but we will not cover them today. Today we only cover the basics that I think that most pilots should use. That's all about the flight modes for today. In the next episode, we will take care of the OSD and especially the DJI FPV OSD. In the meantime, I'm Paweł Spechalski. Thank you very much for watching and like always, happy flying!